Throughout much of the 2012 season, the Houston Texans looked like the best team in the NFL. Keep in mind, through 12 games, the Texans were 11-1, tied with Atlanta for the best record in the league at that time. They had a two-game lead in the race for number one seed in the AFC, so it looked like the Texans were going to lock up home field advantage throughout the playoffs. At that time, they ranked top five in the NFL in both total offense and total defense. It was tough to find a weakness, and then the wheels fell off. The Texans lost three of their final four regular season games, so not only could they not lock up home field throughout the playoffs, they couldn't even lock up a first round bye. They had to play a wild card weekend. They defeated the Cincinnati Bengals, but then the next week in the divisional round, they lost the New England Patriots 41-28. to So if you're a Texans fan, you're sitting here now, and things look a lot worse than they did in the beginning of December. I mean, all of a sudden, you're looking at a team that Seems very vulnerable in the secondary. The Texans were exposed in the secondary over the second half of the season. They were shredded several times, including in that divisional round playoff game by Tom Brady. And you're looking at an offense that just might not be good enough. The offense totally fell asleep in the month of December. That losing streak, they lost three out of their final four regular season games. They only topped 16 points in one of those games. Inexcusable, really, especially when a couple of those games were must-win situations, including against, against Minnesota in Week 16 and their final game against division rival Indianapolis. Houston needed that game to, qualify, or to, to get a first-round bye in the playoffs, and Indianapolis did not have a good defense this past season. Still, the Texans' offense was not able to get it going, the Colts winning that game. So... What's wrong with the offense? I mean, it's not Arian Foster, right? I mean, Foster had another great year, rushed for 1,424 yards, 17 touchdowns. Uh, I know his stats tailed off a little bit in December, but that was mainly because they weren't feeding him the ball. W when they recommitted to Foster in the playoffs, he looked a lot more like the guy in the first half of the season who was leading the NFL in rushing for a time. It's certainly not Andre Johnson. Johnson had a career renaissance. A lot of people thought he was over the hill. 112 catches in 2012, nearly 1,600 yards. A, a lot of fingers right now are being pointed at Matt Schaub. Is Matt Schaub good enough? Can he lead them to a championship? Starting to look like the answer to that question is no. But, you know, the Texans are kind of in a tough spot. I mean, if you're the Texans fan who, who doesn't like Matt Schaub and think it's time for him to go, who are you going to get? Who are they going to get right now who's better than Matt Schaub? I mean, when you look at the, the, the pool of free agent quarterbacks this coming year, it's not too impressive. Even when you add in guys who might be able to be acquired via trade, even though they're not free agents, guys like Alex Smith and Matt Flynn, are those guys really much better than Matt Schaub? Or are they going to give you much more than Matt Schaub is giving you at this point? Is there any rookie quarterback that you could draft who's going to be better than Matt Schaub this next season? I think the answer to that question is no. So if you're the Texans, I think you have what you have on offense. You have Matt Schaub. You have Andre Johnson still playing at a high level, one of the best backs in the league, and Arian Foster. Now, it would help if they could find a number two wide receiver to complement Andre Johnson. I mean, Kevin Walter, Devere Posey stepped up towards the end of the season. He did hurt his knee against the Patriots. But the Texans really lack a viable threat opposite Andre Johnson, and they're in a pretty good position salary cap-wise. They have the 27th draft pick in the first round, so you know not a, not a great draft position. That's what you get when you finish 12-4. and four. But they could still. I mean, we, still, with, with that pick in the first round, with $12 million cap space, around $12 million projected cap space, they could bring a wide receiver in there that is certainly better than what they have now opposite Andre Johnson. Another spot I expect them to look in the offseason is the secondary. We mentioned that secondary was exposed over the second half of the year. They could certainly use an upgrade there. The front seven, very strong on defense, especially when Brian Cushing returns from injury. Cushing was injured against the New York Jets, and obviously his absence hurt the defense. They were a top three defense statistically before Cushing went out with an injury. J.J. Watt, their defensive end, well, defensive tackle, defensive end, that 3-4 scheme, he plays defensive end. Defensive player of the year in 2012, there was no better defensive player in football than J.J. Watt. Wade Phillips done an excellent job with that defense. So a lot of things to like with the Texans, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. On offense, I can understand why Texans fans would be pessimistic. You look at it and you say, well, Arian Foster is in his prime, had a great year. Andre Johnson, the tail end of his prime maybe, had another great year. We're going forward with these guys again next year, with Matt Schaub again next year. And certainly at the end of the season, it didn't appear to be good enough. 
Maybe they can tweak it a little bit, add a part or two, maybe a, a number two wide receiver, as we said, maybe some help along the offensive line that will push this offense over the top. They certainly don't appear ready at this point to challenge the New Englands and Denver of the world. But hey, it, through, 12, through 12 weeks, 13 weeks actually, through 12 games, we weren't saying that, were we? They had the best record in the NFL, again, tied with Atlanta. So we'll see. A lot of teams would love to be in the spot the Houston Texans are, but they don't look right now as good as the elite of the elite, teams like New England, Denver, and I guess we have to throw Baltimore in there after the Ravens won the Super Bowl. But things change year to year. We'll see what 2013 has in store for the Houston Texans.